All right, we're going to be looking at fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the fuels that we rely heavily upon, but in our lifetime, maybe some of these may run out, or some of them may last a little bit longer, but they're not the ones that we really like to burn because they really, really pollute the atmosphere. So fossil fuels are made from dead plants and animals, and unfortunately, we can't just kill plants and animals and try to convert them into fossil fuels. These processes to produce these fuels that we're using have taken millions and millions of years basically from compression and uh, just building up and a lot of chemical activities that require lots of time to actually happen. So we're ba primarily talking about, of course, coal, mineral oil, and natural gas. All of these I'm sure you've seen being used uh, in a car, basically for cooking at home. Um, things are going to be having to change very soon uh, to make sure that we can actually survive into the future with renewable forms of energy. But we need to know a little bit about fossil fuels, so let's start there with fossil fuels. Some basic advantages and disadvantages. For most of these, they are reliable, concentrated forms of energy. We use them, they are good, and we are happy that they exist. One of the disadvantages of fossil fuels is that they need to be transported and stored and one problem about that is just the act of moving them from one place to another can actually cause all kinds of problems like oil spills and a waste of a lot of this stuff too burning them also contributes to global warming which is something you should know a lot about but if not please check it out online find out why global warming is a bad thing for us um, coal is probably the one that will last us the longest. We have a lot. There's plenty full supply, but we're still estimating a few hundred years, maybe. Um, burning it, unfortunately, contributes to acid rain and does all kinds of other things, including contributing to global warming. But every, every one of these things does that as well, too. Mineral oil is at least a liquid, and we can transport it in pipes. But I mentioned before, oil spills are a problem. And if you've ever seen any documentaries showing what oil spills can actually do to the environment it's pretty pretty bad stuff natural gas burns the most cleanly out of all of these things so it's nice we can we still need to make sure we have our fan on at home while we're cooking but it's not contributing to the atmosphere in such horrible ways as some of the other ones but natural gas unfortunately is difficult to drill for and because it is a gas you have to figure out a way to trap it so it doesn't escape into the atmosphere really quickly and become un gatherable or unusable when will they run out says jack bauer from the now long time over television series 24 make a prediction pause the video what do you think and then take a look at this graph this is an estimate so you know 40 years in your lifetime I don't know. I'm almost 40 years old. Not yet, but I'm feeling like it. 40 years, uh, we could be running out of oil within our lifetime. But it depends on how we build our cars and become more uh, energy efficient. If we can build devices that use oil that are more efficient and don't use as much as we used to need, like some of these new hybrid cars, that's really awesome. And maybe this could, we could stretch this use out a little bit longer and come up with some other types of ways, other forms of energy before we actually... Uh, run out and become really really sad so just take a look at this I'm not going to describe it in too much detail but just short simple pictures that are explaining really simply how coal was formed and the difference between how oil and gas were formed compared to coal and so this should give you an idea if you just pause and take a look at this as to why a we just can't reproduce all these fossil fuels again okay consider the age of the earth and how long it takes to make these actual things